Hello, Hopkins. Welcome to another edition of the Hopkins Hangout Hour. Today is Monday, October 13th, Columbus Day, and the staff here at HKM are off for the day. So today we're going to show you a previous recorded show uh, where I interview Chief Joe Bennett, and he gives us an update on how his department is doing throughout the whole COVID and um, all about his new uh, police officers and all the training that they receive and so forth. So I hope you enjoy that. I want to remind everyone we'll be back on Wednesday evening for another uh, live edition of the Hopkins Hangout Hour. Also, I want you to tune in uh, Wednesday afternoon for Tom Nappy's HCAM Sports Talk, and as well as uh, Friday when we uh, go back to the Senior Center, we'll keep moving. And Friday night, myself and Matt will bring you another edition of the Dive-In Drive-In with a, a great musical called Happy Go Lovely. And you get a chance to talk to Matt and I as we discuss the movie and, and the genres of musicals and so forth. And uh, you're invited to join us on Facebook and YouTube. So right now, we're going to go back and talk to Joe Bennett. You're here. Let's get up to date. How you doing? How you feeling? How's everybody? What's going on? Oh, everything's great here. Um, you know, the troops just amaze me every day uh, at the good work they do and how they're, they're staying positive and energetic with all the challenges they're facing. And uh, they just impress me every day. It is, it is tough. And it, it, it is a challenge, you know, I mean, everyone's on a different level. No, no one's in the same frame of mind. And it's bad enough when, let's face it, when you're interacting with an officer, most of the time, it's, it's not in a good moment for that person. And to add all the stresses that are with COVID, it, it must be even harder. It really is. I mean, the, uh, the tension level is palpable and, uh, you know, the officers sense it and, and they, they, they're, they're maintaining their positive attitude and their positive commitment to the community and, you know, just looking to be there for everybody. And um, every day I'm getting positive feedback from the community about an interaction that they had with one of our officers uh, and, and different shows of support come in daily. And, uh, you know, during these hard times, we, we need to be there for, for the people as, more than ever, at least in my career. Right. And, and you know, and working in public safety like you and, and understanding it and, and getting to know your offices more personal than most citizens. Um, you, you know, first off, you could ask for a better group, uh, well led, and everything starts from the top. And it, and it has for a while, not just you, but the many chiefs ahead of you. And you always seem to get the right offices that click into town. And it's not, you know, yeah, you're lucky. We got a couple townies uh, back with us, with uh, Jay and, and Ben. But it's nice that you get people that embrace this community and really, really, they, you would swear they live here because that's how much they feel a part of this community. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it all starts with recruitment, you know, um, through our interview process, we, we have a test and um, most of the offices were, were either took a test or brought here specifically um, because they were recommended by someone else. Yep. But, um, you know, our interviews are very much based on, you know, uh, on who the person is, what's their value system, what, you know, what do they believe in and how do they react under stress? That's what we're really looking for. I mean, all of the candidates are, are qualified, you know, educated and could be a, a good member of a police department, but we, we seek out those special people that, that really get it. You know, they don't just come in and say, well, you know, I want to, I want to, I like community policing and I, I want to serve, you know, we look for the genuine traits, you know, that, that are in the, in the person and, and it shows, shows every day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely on the streets because, you know, getting that kind of trait, you know, you're going to send them to the Academy they're all going to come out the same as everybody else, but you're looking for that, that fit to the town. Right. Exactly. So in speaking of that, we have a couple more offices in uh, the Academy now, right? We do. We have three in the, the Academy, two of them are going together. Um, and then one is independent. He's finished his, uh, Cody's finished his, uh, his bachelor program at Fitchburg state and then entered yep. the, um, the, they go right into the police academy after, after that. So it, through that program, uh, they come out not only with an education, but with the certification needed to become a, a police officer in Massachusetts. So 
Um, and the other two are, are halfway through um, and looking forward to get, getting out. You know, the academy can be fun some days, but it's, uh, it's meant sure. to be. We'll, we'll talk about that, but also these, these candidates here, these two officers aren't strangers to you either, right? No, nope. Brittany uh, actually came to us as an intern, um, Brittany uh, Firth, and she became a dispatcher, and then now she's going to be a full-time police officer. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting to know Nate, Nathan Wright. I've met him a couple of times for the interview process, but uh, he's off in the academy and uh, looking forward to getting him in the building to get to, to know him more. I know you're very lucky with Brittany. I know I stole her from you for a little while. Yes, you did. And it was nice <laughs> that she, it was, you're lucky she came back. It was hard. It was hard to let go. Um, but that's she's, outstanding. She's so, shined since the moment she walked in the building. So exceptional, extraordinary woman. Absolutely. This is going to be a great addition to the town. So now this brings, this will bring your total to how many offices now? So we will be at 27. Um, we're, we're funded for 28. We'll be at 27. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, we're excited. We're excited. It's a good group, very, uh, a new group. I don't want to say young, um, but a lot of new officers and officers with less than five years on the department now. So, um, you know, really today we're really building the future of, of the organization, you know, the next generation that will hopefully be here for decades, you know. Yeah. It's, a shame, it's a shame with uh, the new officers going through the whole COVID, how you, you know, you, you really, I mean, throughout the day, everyone sees the police all the time, but now we're seeing them less because we're keeping everyone safe. They're keeping themselves safe as well as the public. Um, and I bet it's, it, it's going to be hard for them not to be in, able to interact like they do. Absolutely. You know, we, you know, we train our, to really excel in our skill set for personal interaction, uh, right down to our body, use of body language and non and nonverbal communication skills. And we lose a lot of that. And, uh, and it, it also for us, uh, you know, we see, we see bad things, right? Right, Mike? I mean, we, we see bad things, we see horrible things. And yep. those positive interactions with the public, and what keep us balanced would keep us would keep us going and, and and really give us our drive to to excel and uh we all miss it and i've said this on a few different form forums but uh you know we all miss that that contact with the public meeting new people you know uh it, it's hard it really yeah, i mean it, it could be something as simple as just you know at a crosswalk you know at the common let's say you know like we don't have the concerts on the common but you know, they would be there uh, doing, doing the crosswalk and making sure everyone was safe. The interaction you get there, you don't, you don't get to see them in the coffee house because you can't get in the coffee house. You're socially distant, and uh, you, you really don't have that anymore. There's, it, it's, it's tough to really interact with the community, but the good news is everyone knows that you're always there when you need it. Always here. You know? We're always here. For it's you. more than just being needed. It's more than just being needed, too. I mean, you gotta, you're out and about all the time doing your checks, doing whatever. It's yes. just a security pass missing. Absolutely, ninety nine percent of what we do is service based. It's not we're, we're not crime fighters here in town. We're we really, <laughs> I mean, we fight crime, but it's not what the majority of our time is spent on. It really is around that service and uh, engagement with the community. Right. So. With the uh, oh, so that's uh, that's the other thing I want to talk about now. As you, as your numbers grow, with these in the academy, your all your uh, empty spots are now full, right? All your you know your retirements and so forth. Everybody is full. These are going to be new officers. Yep. So um, you know that that will get us to be where we were. So we should have been a couple of years ago with uh, when we lost the three officers who retired. Yep. Um, and that this will bring them back online. Um, we still have the vacancy uh, from Chief Lee, yep. um, and I still have a, um, the open deputy chief spot. So uh, there's there's still some work to be done with regard to that. But you know we're we're in a we, we the finances in town look pretty good, but uh, you know finances are tough right now. So so with the with the hiring freeze that's also going on in town, is it? that will stop the promotions as well? Is that what's holding it up? Well, I'm, I'm hoping to, to advocate for the promotions and uh, get the support of the, of the select board 
especially once we know know the budget and get past the uh, the town meeting. And, you know, that will tell us, we'll, we'll say a lot for, um, you know, but for right now, we've held off because of the uncertainty. Right. Uh, how's the fleet looking? I mean, is there any room left of that parking lot up there? <laughs> no, you got <laughs> Well, you know, um, you know, the, we, the fleet looks good. We're hoping to get, we're hoping to get a few more and replace some old cars. The canine car is up for renewal and we have a, another car with, you know, getting on a hundred thousand miles, which we, we try not to go over a hundred thousand. Um, so, uh, we get a little work to do with that. Um, we most likely will stick with the explorers uh, and, and continue that, that platform. Uh, and the most recent cars came in there, they're, they're um, they're electric or hybrid, which is a new something new to our fleet. Uh, the police interceptor is, is is a hybrid model now uh, with a 10-speed transmission, and specifically built as a cruiser. So it's got high impact uh, rear end, um, heavy duty braking, suspension, uh, side impact reinforcements. Uh, a lot of a lot of good safety features have been built into it, and uh, and and the troops like them. So and that'll help us with uh, not only helping the green community aspect of, for the town, uh, because they will idle on battery and just start to replenish the battery um, at, at scenes. And uh, so, you know. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. That always freaks me out sitting next to one of those at a light. <laughs> and then when you go sip on the gas, it sounds like the engine's just starting up. Yeah. It's like, yeah. the, like me, when, when the first time driving a standard, I was always stalling at the light. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it sounds like, but that's great. So, uh, are you going to be putting in those electric uh, filling stations, if you will, to recharge? Yeah, we should get a couple of those. A Tesla filling spot, right? Yeah, there you go. Oh, right. That'd be great. <laughs> all right. So, I know Tom has this burning question that we've all, I mean, because it's August, and we've all been dying to know. Well, well, you guys didn't give me any talking points on what we we're going to talk about. So, yeah, it doesn't I'm, matter. Yeah. I'm just. I'm so Straight excited to hear this question. Straight up vacation. I'm making you sweat over here. Go All right. On. Well, we don't have uh, the bocce uh, as of right now oh. scheduled, but uh, have you guys been training, and do you think you'll be uh, taking that championship trophy back during the next bocce tournament? Well, we're committed to it, and I know that some of the officers have been working on it uh, independently, but we're going to need to formalize our, our training a little bit because, you know, this is the year. When we get back the next time, we're going to win it. We're, gonna, we're taking away the trophy. Well, the challenge is on that. I, I hope we have a, uh, another bocce tournament soon. I, I hope so, too. You know, awesome. Certainly one of the big things we miss, you know, in the senior dinner and, and all the other, the fishing derby and national night out, you know, all those great things that we do um, that are so fun. Um, but we'll, we'll get back there. We'll get through this and we'll get back to those better times. Absolutely. And we've certainly missed covering those events as well. It's always a lot of fun there. Yeah, your uh, color commentary is awesome, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't tell me said yours, Tom, not mine. <laughs> well, you know, Mike favors the red team. We know. <laughs> right. He 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 is a little biased. When, I, when I do bleed red. I'm there. sorry. Yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, Chief, I saw you guys uh, released a five-year strategic plan. Um, Can you just talk a little bit about? Uh, what that five-year strategic plan is about and some of the things that are included in that? Absolutely. So um, we contracted an outside vendor. Actually, Ed Lee spearheaded this. And uh, we contracted an outside vendor to, to kind of look down the road and see, you know, where we, where we should be moving forward. You know, sometimes when you're, you know, you run an organization, you need that outside feedback because you're on a track and you're moving forward and you're doing great. But sometimes you can't see that you're either missing something or there's something beyond your vision. And uh, so Chief Lee brought in uh, a company uh, run by a um, retired chief from Halston, John Moore. And he worked with us and went through the process of developing the strategic plan. He began with an external survey of the community and uh, that gave a great amount of feedback. So many positive, uh, so many positive uh, uh, comments from the community. And really the number one thing they want from us is more of us. They want more engagement. They want us out speaking in the community. They want us educating the public. Um, that, that's the number one thing that they asked for uh, and resoundingly. And it was good, good to hear, you know? Uh, so uh, then we went to stakeholders meetings and he met with department heads 
and people from other boards and committees. And um, then there was a public forum night. Um, and out of, out of all that was born our five-year strategic plan with eight, eight specific goals. Um, and they're, 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 they're broad. Um, you know, for instance, one of them is community engagement. Um, one is constitutional policing and um, crime, crime prevention. You know, so we really have three goals, right, as a, as a police department. Reduce crime, reduce the fear of crime, and improve the quality of life, really. I mean, that's kind of everything we do. And if you're not, if we're not actively doing that every day, then, you know, we're, we're missing the boat. So what we've done so far, um, the Chief Lee really didn't get a chance to launch it. So what I've done since I came in is I, I, I took those eight goals and we assigned uh, sergeants and the lieutenant to spearhead each topic. And with them, they built their own teams of, of members. And we're looking at some of those teams to bring citizens in to, uh, to expand those goals. But um, so the eight goals, just so I don't miss any, I got my little book here. Uh, so you're shocking to hear that traffic is a big concern in Hopkinton. I don't know. If, you know, I was really surprised to hear that. I've done three surveys in 27 years, and number one problem in town and everyone was traffic, traffic, traffic. <laughs> um, so um, then they, the people really wanted uh, to be involved with the youth, um, with the youth population. So the school resource officers are spearheading that under uh, Sergeant Van Walton. Traffic is Sergeant McNeil, because uh, we have a traffic program, a pretty complex traffic program to deal with complaints and issues. Uh, community interaction and relationship building with all the residents is Sergeant Brennan who is pretty good at meeting with people and talking with people. I don't know if you guys ever met Sergeant Brennan. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, and then this is pretty relevant right now, consistent and constitutional crime prevention in fair and impartial manner while practicing procedural justice. So that's uh, uh, Sergeant Schofield. When he signed up for that, I don't think he knew of all the uh, <laughs> social uncertainty he was walking into, but he's, he's hitting it head on. He's also our, um, our hate crimes and bias officer. So. Uh, community service oriented attention to those 21st century policing tasks of socioeconomic nature to include opioid crisis, vaping, and mental health issues. Uh, so Sergeant Aaron O'Neill works with Youth and Family Services and our GL Diversion Clinician uh, program, uh, and uh, they're busy. So, I mean, you know, uh, those who know all that uh, Youth and Family Services does on a daily basis is, is incredible. Um, and under that one, we also created an elder affairs officer, Molly McGaffigan, to uh, engage with um, the, the seniors. And she's working with, um, with Amy Beck. And has the health department been involved at all in that one? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things we're working on now is what we've realized through a lot of these conversations is we need to be better at communicating. Although we've all individually communicated all of our programs, um, for instance, I'll stick to my department, to, for people to be able a conversation about should the police have social workers with them? Obviously, we haven't promoted the program enough. I mean, we've had, we've had social workers with us for years and they've done countless acts of good work. And obviously we gotta get better at communicating that. So one of the things that Don Alcott brought up pre-COVID was um, we should communicate as a group better with Board of Health, with uh, the seniors, with, uh, with us, Fire, everybody should be communicating their programs better. So we kind of, we made an informal coalition, we're calling it, and we're going to start putting out um, uh, through with the Youth and Family Service as the spear, uh, uh, short videos of, of what we do. And I'm hoping we're trying to piece together the first one will be on uh, the GL Diversion Program at our clinician. So uh, a lot, so much good work is going on. And we don't want, we want to make sure that the public knows all the resources that are here because we have, the, the community is, very supportive of all these programs and the, the select board and the town manager have found funding to expand things like youth and family services so we want to make sure that those that are uh, are uh, in need of anything know that they can they, where they can go to get some help so communication is as in everything you can always communicate better you know and uh, so that's that's great thanks thanks for bringing that up Tom yeah, absolutely. It's uh, some great programs you got going there. And um, uh, I, you were uh, continuing on uh, with uh, some of the other goals. If uh, you want to continue with that, you're more than welcome. Sure. 
Um, so we have uh, sustain, sustaining sufficient staffing to keep pace with projected population and commercial growth through best practices of recruitment and, and retention. So we're really good at great, getting great people here. And we want to make sure that we have a great work environment for them to, to, uh, to thrive in. And we want to keep them, right? They're, the, they're our most valuable assets, uh, other people. And uh, so we're working towards that. And right now, that, that involves a lot of uh, self-health right now and keeping positive uh, around the station and uh, supporting them and dealing with uh, and supporting them as they deal with COVID and, and everything else. So right now that that's, that's the big, the big thing we need to work on and, and keep working on, you know, we can't, we can't forget the impact that all this stuff has on our, on our team members. Uh, but uh, as far as growth, the, uh, the projected growth through the strategic plan is for us to grow to 35 officers um, with the financial uh, uncertainty that we're, we're, we're coming into, you know, uh, I recognize it's going to be hard, but um, you know, we'll, it is my job to advocate for the, for the department. So you'll, you'll see me doing that. What's the department at uh, right now? Uh, if the town meeting budget goes through, we'll be at 28. Ah, okay. That's, uh, that's a 25% growth in, in the department, which is significant, uh, you know, obviously, especially since that, you know, the majority of our budget is uh, salary and uh, is the employees. Ah. And then succession planning and cross training, adherence to management and leadership disciplines, and infinite visioning. That's a cool thing to have infinite visioning. I like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, we have right now um, a lot of talent and, and a lot of skills and a few people, and we're working to spread those out. So, what well, one thing we've done is kind of change the way we do projects, where we're building team leaders uh, on these projects, and this strategic plan is. These, these goals, are what, uh, my idea is that if we task a leader to run a team and then mentor them through the process, that they'll come out of the project, you know, much stronger than they were before because they've learned the skill set of uh, setting goals, managing a team, working through difficulties, managing their, their allotted budgets. So some of these have already been given the budget amount that they have to manage and they don't have to come ask me to, to approve, say, overtime for community engagement but they have to stay within their budget. So, right. so they'll come out of it uh, with some good professional development and uh, other skill sets. We're, we're building um, bench steps, I like to call it, where, um, where we're teaching, like Lieutenant and I are trying to teach more people the skills of what we do daily so that we have uh, more people that can, can do, do the skills that or perform that duty if, um, if we uh, have to work on something else. And then again, this falls also with one of the other ones is protecting the health and wellness of our personnel through awareness and professional collaboration. So, you know, things like not only fitness programs, but uh, wellness programs. Uh, we've already had some, uh, provided some uh, online training in wellness. Uh, the town has uh, youth and family services brought in a, 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 a clinician specialist that works with, with, with um, public safety. Uh, we've given uh, QPR training, which helps to uh, identify potential uh, su suicidal ideations and teaches you how to actually ask the questions, you know, uh, to someone who you might be worried about, which is big. Uh, I mean, suicide among public safety personnel is, 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 is a, uh, at a very high level right now, and it's, it's a huge issue. So, um, good ton going on, you know keep moving forward and building and growing and um, a lot of excitement around here. Oh, I'm sure. And um, there, there must have been uh, some good community feedback uh, when this was uh, released. Uh, could you share uh, any community feedback you might have heard about uh, these eight goals that you got here? So, um, you know, it's funny because we got, we definitely got support for it and uh, got feedback, but there wasn't an outpouring when, the, when this got released. Um, and I haven't had a chance, we just reposted it. And I haven't had a chance to get on Facebook because I just got back this morning um, to see what the feedback was based on the recent post. So I have to uh, dig into that. I'm hoping there was more feedback and guidance and support. And if there's negative feedback, then that's, that's okay too, because we, we want to hear it all. 
I think it's great because it seems that you're implementing a lot of different things in the community in this plan. Uh, how long did it, did it take you to uh, end up creating this plan and getting it on a text like this? Yeah, so it was uh, probably almost nine months before it really was a final product between all the meetings and the survey. Um, and uh, for instance, well, the National Night Out last year, we were pushing the survey. Uh, so that was August. Uh, we, we were, I was handing out the little QR symbols, so asking people to take the survey. But um, so yeah, for us to actually get it off the ground and running was nine months. And uh, we'll certainly post it to our website again. And I'd urge anyone in the community to take a look at it uh, at the strategic plan for the Hopkinton Police Department. Uh, certainly some great stuff here. And I think you guys are going to create some uh, really nice community programs out of this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, as I've said before, and many times is we'll build the department that, that the community wants and expects and deserves, you know, so this is based on their feedback and we'll continue to, to move the department forward the way that the community wants. Um, you know, that's why, that's why we're the second safest. I didn't want to come in first. I want to leave myself a little room, you know, to, for my next performance. Hey, but, but second's not too bad, right? <laughs> It's so competitive at that level. You could have one person steal two dollars and change out of a car, and you drop to like ninth. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Nothing like take competition there, Joe. Nothing like I that. know. Hey, it's so uh, with this uh, growth in your department, uh, uh, how how are you fitting in at the station? There is still room for you. Well, um, we had looked at. We have a, a little bit of expansion on the second floor. Uh, we did a, we, we contracted for um, a proposal plan for how that might be used for office space upstairs and what the best use is. Um, you know, we're always rethinking though. Um, the, the COVID thing really brings in a lot of, uh, a lot of thoughts about, and even going back to regular flu seasons about the yeah, concept of separating people and having separate workspaces. Um, you, you know, for instance, the state police have, been very minimally impacted by COVID because their car, they, they have their own cars. So they're not sharing their workspace. Uh, they spend very little time in the station. So uh, as do our officers. So, you know, originally the initial plan is for office space up here on the second floor, which is um, when you look at the station to the left, there's an area there that's not finished. Uh, uh, we, have, we have enough lockers. Uh, the, the building was originally built for 39 police officers. Uh, so we should be good for now, um, but we are in the process in, in conjunction with the communications department and, and the fire department. There is a public safety building study going on, um, and uh, right now I'm not asking for any uh, works, anything beyond uh, a small workspace where, uh, say, during a storm or if we needed someone to have uh, work off site or to meet someone uh, away from the building, um, so I'm looking for one, one basic workstation and uh, one carport to house a car during a storm so that, uh, you know, because that's what we do is we stash cars around town. We'll put an officer in a car and tell them, go sit at the Woodville Fire Station, go sit down at uh, East Main, and we'll, we'll have them spread out and sit. But it's tough when the snow surrounds your car and, bury, and the plows are buried in. So, <laughs> so I've, never seen had, that I've, I've had to have the highway, I've had the highway guys push me out and throw a snowbank before. So uh, I, I think I pulled a couple of in my time too. <laughs> hey, so what, um, so now that I, uh, the work that you talk about contracting at the station now, that is the unfinished space on the second floor, right? Yes, but we're not doing anything with it right now, not but there. we have it in reserve. You're looking for reserve. So, mm -hmm. When you say built for the 39, that, that was from that, not counting the unused? Or was that included the unused? That will include that build out. Okay, okay. all right, good. So yeah, so you got plenty of room, which is outstanding. Because the building's yeah. not a new building anymore. No, 15 years old, so. 15 years old, um, You know, we're in the process now of trying to get it repaint, you know, slowly repainting the interiors. We need a roof. Um, right. We had to redo the cell block. It was very expensive. Um, because the cell block had settled and had a big crack going through it. Um, but that's, but that's been completed thanks to uh, Dave Del Torrio and, uh, and him taking care of it, went up for a warrant uh, for town meeting and they approved it and that's, that's done now. So um, thankful for that, but we, we take good care of it. Um, 
they, they, everybody in the building does their best to take care of it. But, you know, when you're putting this many people through it, carrying gear with black boots on and, uh, you know, gun belts and scratching their necks, and I mean, it, it takes its toll. And it's not, it's not, and I noticed too, if you look at your young officers, it's no longer a gun belt anymore, Joe, like you used to. I know. Wear, you know? I know. It's the, it's the tasers, it's all the good stuff. It's, you got a taser here, clips here, you got dog oh, no. here, you got, it's. First aid kits, first self-help first aid kits. Oh, that's, what was, that's a great, great uh, lead to my next question about first aid. Now, we know everyone's at least a first responder. Does any of them? go any further? Do, do they ever want to? Can they, if they wanted to? So, of course, we would, we, we, we would want them to become a uh, first responder. The next step would be to be an EMT. We have a good group of people who are EMTs, um, and we support them through the training, uh, annual, uh, biannual recertification and training. Um, so, say, well, from me down to at least off of Sergeant Schofield are all EMTs. Um, but it's not mandatory. It was mandatory that they go, um, and it is. Uh, what they used to put the ambulance with the fire. Yeah, yeah. We used to drive the ambulance, right? Yeah, you were so, the drivers. So you'd have two cops in town, and two firemen, and one of each of one each of them would leave the town and get the ambulance and leave, and then yeah. leave the yeah. cruiser at the side of the road. <laughs> then, then when you came back to town, you had to go get the cruiser. Yep. And then then uh, then the police officer was in the station for another fifteen minutes, filling out the report. <laughs> yeah, you want to run sheet? Yeah, so oh, yeah. we've come a long way, and uh, and now you know most of the fire department are paramedics, so we have that have to be. higher yeah, level. So you got to be a paramedic now. Yeah, you know, it brings in that higher level of care. So, and and that's that's huge. I remember going to medicals when I was a first responder and just being so nervous, you know. And uh, when you, when you get better training, you, you get more comfortable. And when you walk into someone that's scared because they're not feeling well. You know, you need to have that calming effect on them, that bedside manner, and that comes with experience and, and, and training. So uh, I fully support uh, police officers being EMTs. And That's outstanding because you guys are already out on the road. You get there faster. You know, the mm -hmm. calls, you know, people at home don't know that all calls generate and start at the police station, which is great. The 911 comes in there. and But by the time you get an ambulance from the other side of town because they're out on a call already, or I mean, just having the police officer nearby is great. And I've, I've known in a situation in a different town where it helped me out, the uh, ambulance was on the other side of town doing another call. And the first person there was an officer and he happened to have an AED and it helped save somebody's life. Wow. And that's, that's huge by, you know, you guys having some kind of medical training. Sure. And we have, we have AEDs, we carry Narcan, uh, we carry oxygen and a, and a pretty, pretty beefy uh, first aid kit. So including airway, uh, and um, yeah, it, it, it's so important. You know, having like you haven't seen it firsthand. What's calling calling for uh, an ambulance to come for someone that was uh, uh, needed an ambulance badly in my house? Uh, <laughs> when that cop, even though I know I, I he was a first responder and I was I was an EMT. My wife's a nurse. When that cop walks through the door, we, we were just so thankful, like, because it's it's different when you're involved. It's different when it's your loved one. It, 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 it's just different. And to have someone walk through the door within, I think it was within a minute, that, that cop came through my living room, and it, it just helped so much. Yeah, um, that's and that's all. That's always been huge. It's, it's been the best thing. And there's a lot of people say, oh, Mike, what's going on in town? I saw two cruisers and an ambulance and a fire truck. I said, <laughs> oh, just a medical, someone with a hurt knee. It could be anything. Right. It's just, if people don't understand too, you need that many people there because, you know, you could have, you know, so on my size, you got to take off the third floor, narrow stairwell. How are you going to do it? Right. Two guys can't do it. You know, and I, joke, I, joke, I joke that, that there's, a, there's a formula. The heavier the person is, the higher they go within the building. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the elevator's out of service. <laughs> exactly. exactly. But, but we, you know, like, like, for example, Mike, if, if the two medics are in working the patient, They'll call down to the officers. Get me the stair chair. Get me the, get me this. Get me that. And you know we know we know where this, the equipment is in the ambulance. And we grab it and go up. Especially until the additional res, uh, resources respond. So we work great with the fire department, and we always have. It's, oh, it's it's always been it's always been like that. It, you know, and it, and I, I think it all has to boil down to the old days with you, you know, driving the ambulances, and we always had that relationship. 
I mean, all the uh, outings were police and fire outings. It wasn't just yeah. Yeah. Fire, it was police and fire outings. It was, we're having some conversation about bringing back, we used to have a joint Christmas party. And now with the young offices, there's a lot of little kids around. So I'd like to see that's, us get back with that. That's the time to do it. That's the time. I, we still run as an ash and we do it every year. It is fantastic. And, and it's just more and more kids all the time, which is a blast. My kids loved it. You know, yep. they grew up all through it. So still with the programs going on, even though the your building is still closed to the public for daily business, with the exception of, you know, emergencies or whatever. Sure. I mean, you, you, you just can't walk in and say, hey, I want my LTC or anything. You've got to, it's, it's still in lockdown. Well, but, I've opened it up a little bit. Uh, so I've, I've opened up the drug, drug take back box so you can bring your medications and, and, and drop them off. Um, we're still they, asking. That my people, question was, you were able to do the drug uh, take back day. Yeah, which, that was a great, great, great day. It is. We, we want to get that stuff out of the house because, you know, it, it leads to misuse and, uh, and it's dangerous to have those. Some, a lot of those drugs are dangerous to, to children and young people. So get them out of there. We take care of it through, through our partnership with the, the DEA. Uh, we, we dispose of them safely and they don't end up in our water or drinking water too by being flushed down the toilet. So uh, it's a great program. And so I've opened that up. Uh, you can come in and drop your, your LTC off. I, I have a table, just throw it on the table. We'll come get it. Yeah. Uh, but we really, we, we do it more for the public. I mean, our cops are out in the street going to their houses and, and interacting with people every day. They can't, the, the, you know, uh, this is not where, where you want to be if you're trying. <laughs> you don't want to be around us because we're out there every day. And, uh, uh, you know, so we ask that anything you can do through the mail. I mean, you can pay for your gun permit online now. We, we got that up and running thanks to uh, Anne-Marie Condon. Um, oh, excellent. Good. So you can put your application in by, by, by mailing it in and you can pay uh, online so uh, you know and we've been really busy since we opened up the application process we've processed a ton of applications both new and renewals and uh, I, I you know I want to thank the community for being patient with that because it is a big deal to put you know because part of the process is you have to get fingerprinted so now you're in direct you're actually having physical contact with with a police officer uh, and you're in a room you know inside a building so well that, that's it you have the one machine in the center technically in the center of your building and there's no easy way to get to it but you know those things cost a few bucks you know and it's yeah. it's not an ink blot or a paper anymore no. <laughs> no 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 it works good though so same that team concept that i'm trying to instill and in, in become part of our car our, our the norm is uh, so the people that do the fingerprinting, I met with them and said, how are we going to do this? What do we need? What are we going to do? What's it going to look like? And they built a, a pretty, a very safe process. And, uh, and they re, 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 uh, redid some of the ways and practices that we were managing the process of a gun permit renewal and applications. And they did a great job. Uh, Ryan Pulselli, Molly McGaffigan was the team leader and Jay Diana. And uh, I don't want to tell you the number of people that they're processed in the last few weeks because then I'll have to do another interview on how many people have guns in town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's but, a lot more because we, we have an election coming up, so we got to get a lot more. So, you're 100% you're right, Mike. I, I mean, I, I meet with every new applicant, and a lot of them, when I tell them, just honestly tell me what your intentions are so that I can, I have a safety conversation that I have with every single person. And a lot of people are just nervous. They get nervous when the election comes up, and they say, you know, I've been thinking about doing it, but I just felt like uh, now's the time before the election. Yeah, absolutely. They're entitled. It's, you know, that's a, that's their reason. They don't have to justify why they want it. I want to remind the people at home that they can uh, just go on the comment section of the YouTube or the Facebook and ask us a question. As for, it will uh, get Chief Bennett to answer it for you. But, uh, Joe, we have now... Um, been through what, what we are on our fifth month, the sixth month of COVID, and we're coming up with everything being canceled, but things started again, and here we go. Annual town meeting is coming. Wow. Right? September yeah. Uh, I know that it's on the select board agenda again to talk about it. Um, you know, it'd be interesting. I watched uh, the last meeting, and they're, they're looking for a much streamlined meeting and then to address. Uh, more of the articles later. So uh, it'll be interesting, uh, you know, just to, if only a few hundred people can come to the school to watch it, 
you know. But now we have outdoors, open areas. Uh, I think that's going to add to more than just a couple offices, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, our primary role would be uh, traffic and, and logistics and keeping people moving, keeping people, you know, safe. Uh, Board of Health will set the guidelines on to meet the, the, the uh, to meet the guidelines and expectations related to COVID safety. But uh, yeah, it's, it's all going to need to be planned. But we've gotten pretty good at planning events around here because we have so many of them. So uh, Lieutenant Porter does a great job. Well, listen, you, you, you guys got to take a break. You didn't have to do a marathon this year. So right. you got a break, yeah. so you might as well do something. And, and I, right. think it, uh, I think town meetings is a good one for you. And, yeah, uh, and, and just a shout out to all those people that are still going to run it uh, remotely. Um, you know, it, it'll, be a good, it'll be a good weekend, and I'm sure you'll see some runners around town. So do you, do you have any articles coming up for uh, town meeting? Uh, no, we're just the only capital is we we're looking for the cruisers. So, okay, because so that article that oh, that must have been fake news that I saw you were looking for uh, some kind of dress code for dog walking. Well, you know, clothing would be better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to talk about community policing? I know, I know. I mean, think about what I, when I heard all that went on, I'm like, uh, this is either going to go okay or it's going to be. Uh, a big, huge nightmare, and it, it, it went okay. It went okay. The offices did great. You know, I, I said this to people talking. They they had worked the midnight shift, right? They got a half hour to go home. It's already like yes. 80 degrees and humid. <laughs> the last thing that any of them wanted to do was go to that call, and nobody likes wrestling and, or, or with with naked people. It's just, it's it, it just nobody likes that. So uh, they they did a great job. And uh, you still hold it. It's one of the best comments that went viral locally on. Uh, on the Facebook page was, you know, Lucy was well behaved. That was like, she's a good dog. She's a good dog. A good dog. And that was, I mean, this is the kind of Did some I rocks, mean, paper, scissors take place to see who would go to that call. <laughs> no, that it's no, no, no. <laughs> so, that that morning, as I was getting ready, I was on shift that day as well. And as I'm getting ready and I'm listening to the call, I was just standing over my radios like this. I just did I hear that? Yeah. I, so yeah, I mean, we, you know, we get some weird calls, and uh, that was yeah. that was one that took the cake. And I, I'm surprised with the day of the phone age that nobody was out with any uh, video footage of this. Yeah, there there is a little footage of it. Um, oh, okay. There's a very little bit uh, that I've heard about. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Must be on Interestingly, like that, that reminded me of uh, one of my calls. I went to a, a similar call for two people walking down Route 85 near the state park, naked, singing Christmas carols in the middle of summer. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I drove as slow as I could, hoping that they'd make it to Saltboro, but they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they were very peaceful. They actually sang to me the whole ride back to the state. <laughs> That's awesome. Tom, you go ahead. You got to take it from here. I can't. Finish. I can't control myself. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm going to pull up uh, some pictures as I ask you about this. But I understand that uh, the Hopkinton Police Department had some involvement with the Gary Sinise uh, Foundation. And uh, for those that don't know, Gary Sinise, very good actor, was in um, uh, Forrest Gump and one of my favorite shows, CSI New York. And um, you gave a escort to a home that was, I believe, rebuilt by the Gary Sinise Foundation for a veteran. Uh, can you talk about this experience a little bit for the Hopkinton Police Department? Sure. Um, so, you know, this all, this all went down while I was gone, but I'm really proud of, of the department for putting it together and showing us support for uh, uh, Greg Galizzi um, and his wife, Jasmine, who are new, new to town, I'd like to welcome them. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, what a fantastic program. It, we can't do enough for these for these uh, soldiers. I, I was reading a little bit about about Greg uh, to to uh, lose his legs and, and one of his arms is what the what the article said, and uh, just amazing. It's actually on my list of things that I have to do is I want to reach out to him and uh, welcome him to the community. Uh, we're, I'm so happy to have him here, and uh, I'm thankful for his service. Absolutely, that's a great uh, program. So was Gary Sinise there as well, or was it just a uh, I haven't heard that foundation? yet. I haven't got that in briefing yet. So <laughs> nice to meet him. Absolutely. 
Uh, he does this uh, all over the country from what I understand. So it's a great uh, foundation, the Gary Sinise Foundation. Yeah, it really is. Um, very similar to the Tunnel, Tunnel to Towers program. Um, you know, it's, we ask so much, you know, and we have to stand by people when, when, they, when they give like that. Well, it's outstanding. It just shows you, I mean, how much Hopkins loves their veterans as it is, you know, the, uh, you know, the police, fire, the uh, state reps and uh, senators and whatever. They just, they just embrace everything that the veterans have done for us over the years. And, and they continue to show the support um, just about every day, whether it's some kind of event honoring them or just a, visit or just a friendly breakfast and one of the best ones that i love and i love telling the story is it's uh the veterans breakfast which was always the first friday of the month and it used to be three dollars for breakfast and it was what they call the sos and uh the chip beef on toast which was famous breakfast of, of uh of gi's during the war and one day someone just donated the money to cover everybody's breakfast and the word spread and since that day it's been five years since a veteran has paid for a breakfast wow and now myself i do it once or twice a year i will uh donate and every time i do they'll say okay it's going to be four or five months the waiting list was that long and that I love I love hearing that every time. Yeah, that's and, you know, you you know, like I said, the police they you do what you can, whether it's a drive by birthday party for um, a vet or or just anything they need, you hear they need, and you're always there to help out. Yeah, I mean, the, this community is so supportive of, of of the veterans and other people. I mean, I get calls routinely just offering help. You know, is there I want to help. Who can I help? Recently, a family donated thousands of dollars to the senior center to help uh, those seniors affected by COVID. Um, the restaurants uh, will call. In fact, I have to return a call to one of the restaurants, uh, and he'll just call and say, "I want to, I want to help some people with some food," and he'll deliver meals to their homes. Uh, cash donations. Uh, it, it really is. Uh, People are very generous in giving and, and cared about the about veterans and everybody in need in the community. And I'm really excited about uh, Youth and Family Services is not directly doing it, but there's a fund being established in town where people can make donations to the fund and then a, a board or a committee will manage who gets the money. Um, so, you know, that's another exciting thing that, that's going on and, uh, and, and we'd like to put a plug out for that. So you'll be, you'll be hearing me plug that in the future. And, uh, and it's nice to know that uh, in your building, you have a couple of veterans serving for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Downstairs. I'm afraid to miss, miss one, but like we have uh, Aaron O'Neill, Bill Burchard, yeah. um, uh, Evan Brooks, Derek Morton. I know I'm going to miss someone. In, Brittany uh, Remillard. Brittany Remillard. Uh, and they just did their, they just did their, uh, their summer um, deployment. Uh, Evan's back. I just saw him downstairs. He's working right now. Um, That's good. Yeah, I think I heard him on the radio a little while ago. <laughs> That's great. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice that the town allows that time to happen. And, it's, and they should. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually, this is a, a recognition that we got as a patriotic employer from, from the National Guard. Because uh, so we took care of Evan when, when he was deployed on a long deployment. Yeah, it's nice, nice having them back, and it's nice, it's nice that they do there. Only two weeks now, instead of seeing them go overseas. Oh, I know, gonna, I know. With, so with babies, you know, with babies, so yeah. it's a lot to ask from your for your wife. Hey, we're gonna have a couple of kids, and then I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of one of our new officers, I won't say which one, but one of the academy classmates, their, their wife, spouse is leaving on a long deployment uh, as well. So. Yeah, um, that, that makes it hard, and you know, you guys will be right there to support them, and absolutely it's outstanding, just like you do your your brothers and your sisters anywhere else. So, uh, yeah. what so what else we got coming down the line that you know Tom and I haven't heard about? You got something? You got something's uh something in there? Um, 
I don't know, we covered a lot. I think the, the strategic goals and looking to try to engage more through, for now, through the use of the Zoom uh, and these, these types of meetings is really what we're trying to do. And we're also trying to identify uh, any way we can support uh, those who might not have uh, the skill set. So talking with uh, uh, Amy Beck to see if um, from the senior center, uh, the director, and seeing if there's people that maybe some of our, our offices could teach or, or walk through uh, getting online and getting virtual. Um, yeah, a lot of little things going on, but you gave me a, a question with no more, no prodding, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted you, I wanted you nice and fresh. I knew you, I knew, you know, we'll see what's easy about this. I'll ask you a nice one that you, I know you know the answers too. Yeah, you're good. You know, you talk, Someone said, before they went in, what are you talking about? I said, I don't know, but I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Chief, Chief uh, what are some of the ways if the community want to give any type of feedback on the strategic goals or anything like that? Uh, what are some of the ways they can get in touch with you? Great, great. Um, so, you know, it is online. It was a post on Facebook. That That's one way. You can email me directly um, at jbennett at hoppingtonpd.org or call me and and uh, I'll call you back. Uh, smoke signals, any any way you want. Just just get a, get me. Uh, I love your feedback because uh, it, you know, like I said, we're, we're going to build the department to what the public wants. Now, granted, there are people that there, I, I'm not going to. I guess I'll admit this. There's some people that don't like us, and uh, they give us negative feedback. But uh, that there's there's a hundred that give positive, or five hundred that give positive feedback for every every complaint we get. So. Uh, those that know us know, you know, we're just trying to do the best we can here and we deal with a lot of tough situations. So yeah, reach out, call, reach out to me personally, email me, call me, uh, use our Facebook, uh, Twitter, um, to, to give us feedback or, uh, you know, whatever you're most comfortable with, but we, uh, we'd love to hear. Well, you guys do a uh, great work in the community. And, um, one of the other things that I know that your department, the Hopkinton police department, as well as other departments locally have been trying to get out there is uh, lock it or lose it. Uh, I saw this post on the uh, police department, Facebook. I, I saw it on the Hopkinton one, as well as a few other towns, uh, but talks about how vehicles are being targeted that are left unlocked. Sure. Uh, that's a big problem right now. Um, people from this, from Connecticut and other states are coming into the small towns and and stealing stuff. If you leave your car unlocked or your keys in it, they'll take your car. If you leave your wallet in it, they'll charge your your cards up in in, in a matter of an hour and drain the accounts. Um, they're very skilled. It, it is organized. They're dropping people off in neighborhoods that so people will walk around. Um, the towns around us have been hit. Uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't want to put out a challenge. But um, um, we, uh, so yeah, the best thing you can do is lock your stuff. When I, I actually, I'm gonna leave you for one second. Yeah, that was, uh, so, I think that was happening in a few towns. Yeah, oh. it's news right now. And there's, um, there's a lot of intel going through, uh, being fed to us on potential suspects and stuff. But we've been handing these out for years, right? You've seen these on our social media. Uh, like it, lock it, like it, lock it, keep it. And uh, it's so true. Uh, when I when I built these cards years ago, this, the data showed that uh, ninety, like ninety five percent of all the cards that were robbed from were unlocked. And uh, you know, it's just so easy. And that's a that's as opposed to the felony lane gang, who are an organized group that will will break your windows. Um, but uh, the best thing you can do is not leave. Uh, your purse or items that are visible because they're, they're most likely not going to break your window unless they see something that they know that there's because they don't want to make the noise. So keep your car clean. Don't leave your valuables in, in sight and lock your door. And uh, that's what you can do to help us and, and to protect yourself. That's the best, best advice that I can give. Absolutely. I want to ask you, you still have that packet spot out in front for people that are, doing sales on eBay? Yeah, the safe exchange zone. Yep, absolutely. So if the community's out there and they, they don't want to bring people to their home, which I would recommend they don't because it's a free look at your stuff. You know, uh, you, for instance, you leave your shed open and you have something nice in there, they come and see it and then wake up the next morning and it's gone. Um, you know, plenty of good people are, are, are selling and exchanging things every day. And, but there are uh, nefarious people. So 
Uh, we have a spot out front. I mean, you can use any spot out front. And it's all on, on camera. And everybody knows it's a police station. It's a great tool for, uh, for, um, for uh, reducing your risk and exposure to people uh, uh, that might, might uh, be criminal. Um, another, another great program that we're, we're uh, promoting is uh, the uh, Person at Risk program, which Steve Buckley really spearheaded and designed. And now, now Molly is taken over as, uh, as part of her um, uh, elder affairs uh, assignment. So if you have a person uh, that might be at risk because of autism or um, uh, cognitive, uh, a cognitive disability, uh, somebody, that, anybody that's at risk for anything, uh, there's a form that you can fill out online and give it your information. It's not, sh it's confidential. It won't be shared with anybody. And it, it, it asks very basic questions that help us respond. So let's say you have a very uh, touch sensitive person or proximity. They don't like to be crowded. And you share that with us. It helps us to better respond and interact with that person at risk. Or if you did, they're known to elope which means they may sneak out of the house, which we had a young boy downtown that liked to, we'd find him walking Main Street in the middle of the night. But because of this form and our interactions with them, we knew how to deal with them and not upset them or to minimize our, the impact. So I'd, I'd recommend people go to our website and, and utilize that resource as well. Yeah, and you, you also, I mean, all the training, you talk about just something as simple as that. I mean, you, you do the autism awareness training? We do, and, you know, which is incredible. I mean, we've done it on the red team side, but for what you have to do mostly on the blue team, um, it, wow, I, I can't even describe it. Just what it's you have so to helpful. One of the, that's one. Speaking of training, that's one of the things that I want to do is better educate the public on all the training that we get. I mean, we we have a very robust training program. Um, we send officers to all all types of training. Um, you know, like for instance, the topic of, of bias, right? We've been training offices in, in recognizing and, uh, and, and preventing uh, bias activities and being more aware and conscious of bias for years. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's the real great tra training program and, and the town supports it. Um, it's, uh, I started writing a list of all the things that we train in and it's it's exhaustive so we're not just going to the range and shooting like you know like the police department in the 70s go shoot twice a year and get your ppr card and you're good now get on the road uh, you're constantly training and you're training in things that you never think you'd be training in you know it's, oh, yeah. because it's constantly constantly changing you right know, it's it's not like oh yeah i took autism awareness two years ago Oh yeah, you need it again because so much has changed. It's like CPR every year. You know, remember right. you had two rescue breaths. Now there's no breathing. Now, you, I mean, you have to retrain and get fresh training to stay current. It, you know, it, it's absolutely true. Just, um, you know, just because we took a bias training class, so we started five years, but doesn't mean we haven't repeated it, and doesn't mean we haven't, you know, gotten, you know, uh, more current I mean, contemporary uh, information. You know, you gotta, you gotta keep retraining, especially when you ask, you know, offices to focus on all the quality of life issues, you know, uh, so. That's outstanding. Well, Chief, thank you very much for uh, coming in on your first day back from vacation. We appreciate you getting all the tough and rough questions from Tom Nappy and myself, you know, it's, it's always. I, I'm gonna get my botch, I'm gonna build it in, I'm gonna take that expanded space and build there next to me and build a botchy court. <laughs> <laughs> You think that I, I definitely make the news, right? Well, yeah, you know what? I, I tell you what. Well, you might actually win the trophy. I mean, it might happen. <laughs> I, I did hear a rumor the fire department has one down there somewhere. Oh, <laughs> the basement yeah. of window. Yeah. <laughs> you got everything over there. Okay, thanks again. I like to thank everyone for watching and have a great day. We'll see you back tomorrow.